Pastors are not gods. I said pastors are not. Don't worship us. I said don't do what? Don't worship us. We are not gods. We are not. The day you will realize that we are not gods, probably it may be too late. We are not gods. Respect us. That's fine. But don't worship us. Don't worship me. In fact, let me make it personal. I don't need you to worship me. Don't try. Hallelujah. I'm not your God. I'm your pastor. Respect me. Yes, that's fine. But don't worship me. Worship God. Hallelujah. All right, let's move on. (laughs) Daniel. Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verse 3 to 5. We all know the Daniel story, so I'm just going to, because I need to really, uh, my time is almost up. Um, I'll talk about Daniel and then we'll continue uh, the next time. Now, Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. The king planned to set him up because of his character, because of how how, uh, he handled himself, how honest he was, how good he was, he held uh, himself uh, so high. I mean, he did what was right. Now, Daniel, okay, others, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. Why? They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor he was neither corrupt nor negligent. You see, you could be very good and not be corrupt at your workplace, but if you are negligent, people will find issues and they can really trap you because you are very negligent. You don't pay attention to details. Hallelujah. And this is to Christians. Because sometimes Christians portray that they are not corrupt, but they are very negligent. They take things for granted. They think because they pray, everything will be fine. You may pray, but you have to really be focused and diligent. Don't be negligent. God is not negligent. God is very diligent. Jesus was very diligent when he walked on earth. Hallelujah. So we have to be very diligent. They did not find any problem because he was neither corrupt nor negligent. Move on, verse 5. Finally, this man said, we will never find, even if we try, even if we go to heaven and come, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. Integrity. I said integrity because they knew that you can do everything but Daniel, unless you try, you see, unless you force him not to serve his God because when you say it, he will still serve him. But for us, very trivial things make us say, hey, me, I don't know God. Uh, me, me, me. You know, let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me tell you this. You know, he said, when did I say that? You know, the day, the day you pretended you are not a Christian, the day you pretended you are not a Christian because you saw some money, the day you pretended you are not a Christian because you wanted to sin, and you made it look like you cry, you don't know Jesus. Hallelujah. You betrayed him. You did betrayed him. Hallelujah. Hmm. They were looking for ways to get Daniel. But they realized that unless it has something to do with his God, this man, you will never get him. Because he was very trustworthy. He was never negligent. 
if you bring anything connected to his God, please, you can do everything. Don't touch his God. But unfortunately, they wanted to touch his God. Hallelujah. And they schemed. They had their plan. They did everything. If you go home, go and read the rest. But because we don't have time to read everything. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel learned that the decrees had been published, that nobody should pray to any other God, nobody to wo- should worship any other God, nobody except the image. Okay, all right. Now, when Daniel learned that the decrees had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. He knew what he was doing. He knew the trouble that could come. Just like Joseph. They knew that what they were doing would bring trouble. But they trusted their God so much. They honored their God so much. They believed in their God so much that they will not do anything to dishonor him. God said this morning, he said, if you honor me, he said, Tell them, tell my children, tell my church, if they honor me, I will honor them. If they honor me. Honoring God, we will talk on honoring God at another time. But honoring God entails a lot. Today we're talking about integrity. The guy knew who he was. Daniel knew the God he served as well. And will not do anything. You can take everything. He was really threatened with lion's den. Yet he was not afraid. His brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were threatened with fire. They were not afraid. What are you threatened with? That you are afraid that God cannot take care of you. That's why we say no. If we don't do it, what will we eat? If they sack me from my workplace, where will I go? You go to God. Where else would you go? Do you have another place? If you don't have any option, then you go to God. Then you go, when you go to God, tell him, God, they sacked me. Ah. But you're, you see, God, they sacked me from my workplace because I stood in your name. I said I wouldn't do what they want me to do. So they sacked me. So I don't have a job. I don't even know what I'm going to eat. But I don't need to think about what I can eat. I will eat. Why? Because your word says that you take care of the beds. Am I not better than a bed? What does the Bible say? You are much more valuable than two sparrows. Hallelujah. He says sparrows, they are sold for two for a penny. Two sparrows for a penny. It tells you they have no value at all. Two sparrows for a penny. But he says that God takes care of them. How much more you created in the image of God. Uh, it's not even two. Uh, five, uh, not five sparrows sold for two pennies. Yeah, so two are for a penny. Hallelujah. What about five and yato so back? Hallelujah. Uh, not five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Why do you think that God will forget about you? Sparrows were not created in the image of God. You, you have God's DNA inside of you. Why do you think? Not only. Was, were you created in the image of God? But Jesus lives in you. He died for you. And because of that, as you accepted him, he lives in you. If the Holy Spirit lives in you, it means Jesus lives in you. It means God lives in you. Hallelujah. And if that is so, and he will take care of us. If I'm hungry, God is hungry. He's here. Is he not inside of me? 
So if I'm hungry, God is hungry. If I'm thirsty, God is thirsty. Yeah, but how? What did Jesus say? If you did not give me something to drink, you did not give it to Jesus. Didn't he say that? If you did not give me clothes to wear, it means Jesus is naked and cold. Amen. If I'm hungry, Jesus is hungry. And Jesus knows how to feed himself and knows how to feed me. Hallelujah. We need to know him. We need to understand. Because if we want to live in integrity, there are certain principles about God we need to understand. We have to really go deep into his word to know who he is. We have to begin to live a certain kind of life. Look, if you know him, like Daniel knew him, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew him, no one will threaten you with anything and you will be afraid. He says that, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That's what he's given to us. So we are not supposed to walk in fear. Children of God, I said you are not supposed to walk in fear. We are not supposed to. We Look, majority of us, we are walking in fear. That is why there is no integrity. That is why we can't stand for anything. Because we are afraid. But what is going to happen to me? Ask yourself, why are you not able to stand for God? You know, listen, no one sitting here this morning can tell me that you don't know the truth. Every sin you commit, you know it's a sin. Tell me you don't know. We know what we do. But we feel that if we don't do, we will not survive. Hallelujah. If I don't do this, you see, I will be sad. If I don't do that, you know, I will not have this money. If I don't do that, you know, that's what we are afraid. We walk in fear every day. Fear is a spirit. Bible says that I have not given you a spirit of fear. So it's coming from someone else. It's coming from the devil. If you are walking in fear, you are under the control of the devil. He puts fear inside of you. So you will not be able to do what God wants you to do. So he begins to blackmail you. He begins to tell you stories. He begins to say things that will make you afraid. He, he will even really threaten you with that. That's why Jesus said that he has conquered death. Don't be afraid of death. He says, don't be afraid. You know, people will scare you. People will threaten you. They will do everything to really make you afraid on this earth. What you will lose, what you will not get. But the Bible says that don't be afraid of the one who is going to put you, this body to death. But the one who will put this body to death and put you in hellfire. He's the one you have to be afraid of if there's any fear. That is what we call the fear of God. You have to, you see, you have to have a reverential fear of God. You have to know that God is my God. The end, if I don't really do right. And you see, the, the, the problem is that some people say, oh, yeah, you see, God is not, God is love. God is not this, so you don't have to be afraid of God. Hey, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. That's what the Bible say. It's a fearful thing to fall. You see, fear... The fear of the devil can, should never be confused with the fear of God. We need to understand. And unfortunately, if you are not afraid of God, you will never be able to live a life of integrity. Because you do things anyhow. You will never be able to live a life of integrity. So from today, you have to really have the fear of God in your spirit. Hallelujah. No fear of the devil. The fear of the devil is, I'm afraid I don't even know what I will eat. I'm afraid I don't even know what I will wear. I'm afraid I will lose my job. That's the fear of man. It comes from the devil. Hallelujah. Daniel was not afraid of what man was going to do to him. 
Daniel stood. Daniel lived a life of integrity. He knew. So, you see, in his workplace, they couldn't find any trouble with his work. In his workplace, that was not, he was not living for, working for a Christian. Yet, they couldn't find any trouble with his work. He was right in doing what he has to do. Where you work, how do people see you? How do people see you? Do you do the work that you're supposed to do? You need to ask yourself. Is the money you are taking for you? Yeah, but they were giving it to me. If you, if you know you have not worked for it, don't take it. I said, don't take it. Yeah, but it will make me poor. So what? Hallelujah. Because it will catch up with you one day. I said, one day it will catch up with you. Let's begin to live our lives. Because, you see, now people don't even know who we are again. Because they see all of us. We see that on a Sunday morning like this. We have all dressed nicely. We've come to church. Hallelujah. Tomorrow we'll go to the office. We are different people. We are completely different. I said completely different. Someone told me, one of the days we went for evangelism in Legon, One, someone told me, he said that, yeah, but I know these people, I know they're not, they're not living right, but they post things. They're posting things and writing nicely about God, but I know that their lives are not the way they say it is. Haven't we met them all the time? I mean, and they will tell you. One lady told us, me, me and Kakra, I said, I even, even I have resigned from my position in, in, in the youth fellowship. Because the things, he said, I, sometimes I feel so bad, I'm not doing anything. But then the people that are posting the things, I see them and I'm even doing well. And I don't know what is what again. Then I asked her, I said, do you also? I said, yes, I also try to post it, but I don't, I can't live it. I am posting things I don't live. And I know they have given me people to lead. I can't lead them because my life is not right. So I am resigning and I have resigned. Because I can't do it. But some people, they are not afraid of God. Though. They will post everything. They will use one side of their mouth to say one thing, and this one will say something else. Hallelujah. This is, this is the gift. Bible. You to come. You are presenting Bible here. One side. One side, Bible. One side, invitation to the hotel. This side is Bible. They, they, they're preaching. But here, it is something else. How can you reconcile that? How can, how can fresh water and salty water come from the same spring. How is that possible? Who are we? Who are we? This one thinks, this one thinks, oh, he's preaching to me. This one thinks, oh, this guy is useless. <laughs> and, and we don't know. And sometimes, you, 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 you show your, somebody to your, you know, that this is my pastor. And the girl looks at you and says, hey. This one, I know him. He comes to my, my area there. Hallelujah. Yes, say it, Radia Juma. 
No integrity, even on the pulpits. Let's be frank with it. Look, we are standing here asking for the money when we know that money is not going to church. We are telling you everything, but we know where the money is going to go. Hallelujah. We are doing, listen, we have to be frank. Everything, some people, they know the percentage they get from it. So they are saying, so, 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 so. But it is not for your blessing, it is for their percentage. You see, you are afraid. You see, listen, this is integrity. This pulpit must be a place of integrity. You cannot come and stand here and say one thing and mean something else. Vulnerable people are in church and they're being taken advantage of. Somebody will have to say the truth from the same pulpit. I said someone will have to say the truth from the same pulpit. Then tomorrow they say something else. No, let's say it from here. Shout it from the rooftop. There is no integrity. The church is going down. The pe- people are not coming to church. People are sitting in church corrupt because the pastor is corrupt. If we don't change our lives, the people will never be changed. Bible says that how can a blind man lead uh, the people? They will all fall into the same ditch. That's where the church is going. We're pushing people into a pit. Strange, but true. Hallelujah. Somebody will have to say something. Because if we all shut up, the people will be taken advantage of. I see people in church, I am sad. I see people, they say they are Christians, I am sad. Because they are so vulnerable. They don't, nobody even teaches them the Bible. Nobody. If you come to church, whether you read the Bible or you don't read the Bible, it's not the pastor's business. They don't care. Hallelujah. They don't care what you post. It's your life. Why are you a pastor? Why are you called? Teach them to obey every command. Are you teaching us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I can feel the quietness. I can feel it. Hallelujah. Amen. No, you, but they dress nicely. For my dear mommy. They dress to come to church to seduce men in church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, even the men are afraid to give the women lifts. Because the moment they sit in your car, they begin to pull the address. Yeah, it happens all the time. No, someone told me, he said that I, at the motorway end, one end, somebody was stopping me, stopping me, and said, Oh, why are you You're I He said, I stopped, I said, Get down from my car. We don't mean can get down. <laughs> Tell them to get down from your car. They don't buy fuel for you. They don't do anything for you. It was a good you were doing. If they try to do something else, stop them in the middle of the night, in the middle of the road. Tell them, get down. It's better to get, let them get down than to fall into temptation. Hallelujah. If they don't respect themselves, we will not respect them. We will leave them in the middle of the road. In fact, some of us cry, I am foul. Hallelujah. Because it's not true. Not true. Hallelujah. Look, some, you see, the problem we have today is we are not able to tell. Truth has fallen in the street. So we can't tell people the truth. Hallelujah. I said, look, I'm telling you the truth. People dress to church to seduce men. 
You see, people are saying correct. The men are saying correct. <laughs> Hallelujah. The men too, you have your weaknesses. Because you see that the woman is desperate and he wants a husband. Oh, he might say, when was she your oh, Hima? Is she the queen mother of your hometown? You have a wife. Now you begin to call women, oh, my queen. Hey, your queen is your wife. She's not your queen. Don't try to, you see, you do that and the women, uh, nobody even appreciates you. You see somebody's wife, he say, you know, hey, my queen. And they begin to tell you everything about their husband. How about, my husband even never says this to me. My husband even never says, oh, today you are well dressed. And then, the, uh, uh, even when I dress, my husband didn't say anything. This man loves me more than my husband. It's a lie. It's a lie. Hallelujah. And then you begin, yeah, you see. So when you, when you come to church, what person can be so for Papa Nijina? So now when you are coming to church, you dress for the man, not for your husband. Because your husband never, never says it. Do you know where your husband was trained? He came from the village. In the village, they don't say that. So if he doesn't know how to say it, teach him. Hallelujah. Even if it's not, look, me. <laughs> look at me wearing pajamas to church. <laughs> I don't like, my wife lies. I, he has taught me to wear this, and I'm wearing it. And even if it's not nice, when I dress, he says, Oh, my affair. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, that's the reality. So people, people are so vulnerable in church because the men are, the women are doing it, the men are doing it. No integrity. No integrity. Listen, men, don't go and tell somebody's wife that wife. He's not your wife. Don't do it. As much as you think you appreciate her, keep it in your head. Keep it in your head. When you start, be, do, you start doing that, there is a spirit called the spirit of seduction. It comes inside of you and you are beginning to seduce women like that. They go and then even when their husband is calling them, they are thinking about you. Ask the woman. If it's not true, they will tell you. You give gift by heart. Like the husband is not responsible. Stop doing that. Because it has consequences. You may not be thinking anything, but she's thinking differently. Ah, I like that. He says true. A woman said truth. So if a woman said true to this, it means it's the truth. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. The fact that you have money and you can, don't do it. He's somebody's wife. Respect that. Hallelujah. If they are very, I mean, if you see that they have need, go through the church. Do it anonymously. Do it. No, let me tell you, some people respect their pastors more than their husbands. Don't come and make me daddy, daddy, and then your husband is like trash. Don't come and do that. I don't want it. I don't want it. Yes, I'm your pastor. Yes. But if you don't respect your husband, don't come and pretend you respect me. First, respect your husband at home before you come and make me daddy, daddy here. Integrity. And as a pastor, I have to let the people know that. That's integrity. Amen. Hallelujah. I need to set the example. So if I'm saying that, look, tell me. All of you sitting here, tell me. Who, who have I ever said that? Oh, and now why if you... Because I know what I stand for. 
And I know the consequences. I do deliverance. I pray for people. I know the things we encounter. People are not spiritual. They talk by heart. And then when you talk about it, they say, oh, you, you are too spiritual, spiritual. Do you know what? What does the Bible say? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You are fighting with spiritual wickedness in high places and you are behaving in the flesh. Be careful. That's why when you dream, people are booting you. And snakes are chasing you. That's why when you dream, uh, monkeys are coming after you. You think there's nothing in the spirit. Keep, go, keep going. People will eat you alive in your sleep. You know some people, when they wake up, they say, ah, I don't understand today, I'm so tired. You carry blocks at night. <laughs> you go for by day at night. When you are asleep, people are giving you work to do. Yeah, because you don't believe anything in the spirit. So they have taken you for granted. But are you wiser than the Bible? Which says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. Do you know what spiritual wickedness in high places mean? They even hold on to your prayer. Beloved, integrity. My point. 